Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. So today we are going to discuss about role of lexical analyzer. So our compiler design syllabus is designed in such a way that our first unit will always uh, be about lexical analyzer. Your second and third unit will always be about uh, syntax analyzer. Your third unit will be semantic analyzer. Your fourth unit will be intermediate code generation, code optimization. And most probably your fifth unit will be code generation. In this way, all the phases will be covered through entire syllabus, right? So we are into first unit that is uh, about lexical analysis. So we know what lexical analysis do and how it generates the tokens which we are getting from the source program. Okay. So first let's have a basic idea about lexical analyzer uh, so that we'll see some functions of a lexical analyzer. Okay. So what's the first function of a lexical analyzer? It produces a stream of tokens. So we we'll take from uh, we'll take uh, from the source input and that is divided into stream of tokens. Second, it removes comments from the source program. If there are any comments in the source program, like uh, uh, like if we give like this, these are comments, right? So these comments are uh, removed from the source program and it removes blank spaces or we call it as white spaces. So blank spaces or white spaces are removed from the source program. Who is going to remove that lexical analyzer? Line numbers are counted in source program. So uh, how many lines are there in the source program? If, if, if our program is of 100 lines of code, it uh, remove uh, these line numbers are counted. So how it throws an error showing that uh, at particular line number 10, a semicolon is missing. So line numbers are counted by the lexical analyzer. That's the reason for that. And the last one, it generates symbol table. That is, it stores every sort of information in the symbol table. For example, if we take um, uh, C equal to A plus B into 5. So it stores every, uh, the C identifier 1 equal to ID 2 plus ID 3 into 5. So every sort of information in symbol table, like this is my symbol table. This is 1, that is ID 1. So all information is stored for ID 1. For 2, this is ID 2. Every information is stored for ID 2. This is ID 3. Every information is stored in for ID 3. In this way, your symbol table is uh, maintained. Okay, so these are the basic functions of lexical analyzer. Now, we'll see uh, what are tokens, what are lexemes, what are patterns. Now we'll see what is tokens, patterns and lexemes. So what is a token? So as we are already saying that uh, lexical, analyzer, uh, lexical analyzer will divide the source program into tokens, right? So tokens, it's a class or category of the input. Uh, input string, class or category of the input string, like it can be identifier, it can be, it comes under keywords, it comes under constants. So what are identifier if I say C equal to A plus B? So C is an identifier, A is an identifier, B is an identifier. Okay. Now what are keywords? If I say int space A, here int is my uh, keyword. Okay. Like constants. So we have constants. So this comes under tokens. And the second one is patterns. So what is a pattern here? A rule that describe a token, how a token should be and how, um, what are the different characteristics of a token? If we set such a rules for that, and that rules are called patterns. Now what is lexemes here? Lexeme is a sequence of characters that are matched with the pattern. So whatever pattern we have, that sequence of characters should match with the pattern, then it is called as a lexeme. Now we'll see each of these with an example by taking a small source code or a small program. Okay, so we'll draw a table. What is lexeme and what is the description of that? So here I have taken a program int max of int a comma int b open parenthesis if a greater than b return a else return b and parenthesis close. Now this example is shown through a table. Okay. So here I will take a lexeme. I 
and a token. So what is the first encountered? My first encountered is int. My first lexeme is int. Now what is int here? What which category does it comes under? So what we have studied now, token is nothing but a class or a category. So what is int here? Int is a keyword. So it comes under category keywords. Now the second one is max. Now what is max here? Max is an identifier. Next, left parenthesis. Left parenthesis is symbol or operator. Next, int. Int is again keyword. Okay. Next is small a. So what is small a? Small a is identifier. Now, comma. Comma is an operator. Next int, int is a keyword. Next b, b is an identifier. Like that, we will construct each one. What is the lexeme here and what is the respective token for that. Okay, so uh, this is all about lexemes, tokens and patterns. Now, we already discussed about the functions of a lexical analyzer. Now, we will see what is the role of a lexical analyzer, what is the importance of a lexical analyzer with a neat sketch, okay. So here we have a source input, here I have a lexical analyzer, this is syntax analyzer or we can call it as a parser, okay. And uh, as I already said that in each phase we have symbol table management at the same time error handler. Now what exactly happens is, uh, lexical analyzer will generate tokens, right. So first, who is taking the initiative here? Here, parser will take initiative. Why? Because parser need to construct a parse tree. In order to construct a parse tree, parser needs group of tokens. Now, who is going to supply the tokens? The tokens are supplied by lexical analyzer. From where lexical analyzer is supplying the tokens? Lexical analyzer will supply tokens or divide tokens from the source input. So here, the initiative will be taken by parser. First, parser will ask for tokens. So, what is what does parser do? Demand tokens. Parser will demand tokens. Now, what lexical analyzer will do? Lexical analyzer will check whether uh, any source input is there or not. So, here a source input is there. Now, what lexical analyzer will do? The job of lexical analyzer will divide into group of tokens. The source input is divided into group of tokens. So after dividing, this lexical analyzer already got a request from parser for asking tokens, right? So it will provide tokens. Return tokens. So this is parser. Okay, right. So now what is the output of a parser? Once it receives a token, parser will generate a parse tree. Okay. So parser will generate a parse tree. And the remaining is rest of a compiler and finally we will get output, target output. And this is my source input. So here at uh, the last I have given rest, rest of a compiler. Why? Because our main focus is only on lexical analyzer. Remaining phases and all we will see in our next topics. So here, this error handler as well as symbol table is common in each and every phase. Okay. So what exactly happening here? Parser will demand for tokens and lexical analyzer will check, uh, check whether any input is there or not, source input. So once it receives a source input, it divides that into group of tokens and provides or returns the tokens to parser. Therefore, parser constructs a parse tree. So this is the role of a parser. So in this uh, video, we explained about what is lexical analyzer, role of a lexical analyzer, what are the different functions of a lexical analyzer, what is lexeme, what is pattern and what is token. We have seen an example by uh, grouping that into a table. And finally, we have seen the functionality of a lexical analyzer, how it divides into tokens. So I hope you understood uh, today's topic. 
the students who are watching my channel for the first time i request you to please subscribe my channel and please share my videos to your friends and well wishers and please support our channel in all possible ways thank you thank you very much and have a wonderful day